so I've, I've been teaching, so I will, I will try not to, not to preach. I don't know what to call the, call the, 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 the teaching for today, but maybe as we progress, you will give it a, a title. Um, I tried to look for a title. In fact, when I was told that uh, I'm going to be teaching or ministering, the first word that came to me that the Spirit of God dropped in my heart is service for exploit. So, um, <laughs> amen. So I was, I was asking, you know, I was asking, that, of course, there are, there are a, lot of, a lot of scriptures that talks about service and things like that. You know, but you know, it, wasn't, it wasn't really flowing with, with, the, with the theme of the, of the season, you know. So there have been a lot of prophecies going on and there have been a lot of powerful, powerful teachings. So I was like, you know, God, don't make my own too, too quiet. You know, so it will not look like a, you know, but anyway. So that... That was a topic that came. So I'm, I'm going to keep in, in that direction. Just in case you want to give it a topic, you can, you can call it that. And we're going to look at the scripture that God has given to us. Because when I was looking for what scripture to actually use to teach service, there are a lot of scriptures that talk about service, you know. So, but when I was looking for scripture to actually teach service, God, God kind of like restrained me again. And then took me back to the scripture, the anchor scripture for this, for this year. So it, it is really surprising because if you look at that scripture, there is nothing that has to do with service to me, you know. So at, at first glance, I didn't see any relationship between the scripture that God is saying we should look at and service. So that's why it's going to be a very interesting teaching. So please, I ask that you follow me as we go along. So let's open our Bibles to the book of Daniel chapter 11. We're going to read the whole of Daniel 11 so that you will understand the story. And that's how we're going to flow. So if I ask the media to please project Daniel chapter 11 for me, so we can actually have a teaching. So please try not to sleep, because when teachers are preaching, sometimes people tend to fall asleep. So please try not to, try not to sleep. Amen. I will try to make it interesting by telling jokes in between. Hopefully I can remember one or two. <laughs> Amen. So let's... Let's carry on. Daniel 11 from verse 1. It says, Also I, in the first year of Darius the maid, even I stood to confirm and to strengthen him. Verse 2. And now will I show thee the truth. The angel speaking to Daniel now. Behold, there shall stand up yet three kings in Persia. So the three kings in Persia that the Bible is talking about are King Darius the Great, Cyprus the Great, and Cambyses the Second. So these are the three kings of Persia that the Bible is talking about. And then it went on to say, And the fourth shall be far richer than they all. And by his strength, through his riches, he shall stir up all against the realm of Gracia. Gracia there is Greece. Okay, so it says the fourth shall be far richer than them all. Now, this fourth man or this fourth king is known as King Cesus. All right, he is, um, he is also known to most of us as King Ahasuerus. All right, so that's what happened in the book of Esther chapter 3. Okay, so we know King Ahasuerus because the Bible clearly says, um, can, can we go back, back to... Oh, and the mighty king shall stand up. Okay, yeah, so the fourth king. It says, and it shall be far richer than they all, and by his strength through his riches, he shall stir up all against the realm of Greece. All right, we, we can progress now to verse, uh, verse 3. I'll, I'll come back shortly. And a mighty king, okay, before I go to the mighty king. So now, this fourth king we have noted is King Ahasuerus. And King Ahasuerus, the Bible noted, that he will try to wipe out the land of Greece. And this happened in the time of Esther and Mordecai. Okay, when the, uh, the king gave the decree that all the Jews that are living in Persia at the time should all be killed. All right, so this, this already happened in prophecies. In fact, when I was going through, through Daniel chapter 11 and just studying about it, one, one thing I find so striking is that all the commentators kept saying that Daniel 11 is so precise in prophecy that a lot of people actually think that it is something that is written after the fact and not prophecy. So, because if you look at the events that have happened, it all happened and it was all clear 
like so clear to people and a lot of people are like this is this wasn't prophecy this was just is um is how, how do i would like but, but yeah, anyway sorry thank you thank you sir it was a is a documentary but it's actually prophecy all right and majority of these things hasn't happened as at the time this prophecy was given and they all they all fell in line okay so follow me now um verse three it says and the mighty king shall stand up that shall rule with great dominion and do according to his will. Now, this mighty king is known as Alexander the Great. All right. Um, if we go to verse 4, we shall see. It says, and when he shall stand up, his kingdom shall be broken and shall be divided towards the four winds of the heaven. Now, Alexander the Great didn't last long. All right, he didn't, he, he didn't live long. He died at the age of 32, so he died really young. So the Bible says when he shall stand up, his kingdom shall be broken. So he died. He died really young. And then if you read further, it was saying that, um, yeah, it says, and not his posterity. So it was divided to the, to the four winds of the earth. No, no one of his bosom actually became king. All right, because I think he had about three successors at the time that could become king. His half-brother, Philip. His uh, son, Alexander IV, and then his, um, his half-son, or illegitimate son. All right, he was uh, born to, what's her name? Is it uh, Bessina, something like that? Okay, so that's his illegit illegitimate son that was born by a pagan woman. Okay, and this is called Heracles, or most of us know him as Hercules. All right, so he's, he's the fourth. These were the three proposed successors of Alexander the Great, but none of them became successors all right um nor according to his dominion which he ruled so that means these four kings were neither his were neither people from his bosom and they they also didn't rule in line with his instructions all right um for his kingdom shall be plucked up even for others beside those let's let's move on i will stop at verse five because um, the, 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 the rest are a lot of stories, but I will use verse 5 to explain the rest. And the king of the south shall be strong, and one of his princes, and he shall be strong above him, and have dominion, his dominion shall be great, or shall be a great dominion. Now from verse 5 down to verse 16, it was talking about the battle between the king of the south and the king of the north. Alright, so let me tell you, so the, the four, in, in case you're taking note, four um, generals. So the, the, it's, the Bible says it was divided into four wings, isn't it? So these, these four wings were taken over by four generals of Alexander the Great. And these are the four generals. Cassandra, uh, Lysimachus, pa pardon my Greek pronunciation, um, Seleucus, and then Ptolemy. All right. So Seleucus is in the north and Ptolemy is in the south. All right, so these were the four generals of Alexander the Great. And if you read from verse 5 down to verse 16, it was talking about the battle between Seleucus and Ptolemy and then their descendants. All right, so I'm, I'm not going to go deep into that. I will stop there and then come all the way down to verse 16. Now, the reason I'm, I'm just going to hint a little bit on verse 16, just because when I was reading the commentary, some modern scholars, at, I... I, I read some commentaries and also listened to some, to some comment, uh, commentaries as well. And some of the modern scholars believe that in verse 16, um, a king, the king who imposes, because the Bible talks about the king, verse 16 can okay. It says, but he that cometh against him shall do according to his own will. And none shall stand before him, and he shall stand in the glorious land which by his hand has consumed. Can we go to 17, please? He shall also set his face to enter with the strength, blah, blah, blah. Can we go to 18, please? After this shall he turn his face unto the owl and shall take many, but the prince for his own behalf shall cause the prey, blah, blah, blah. Can we go to 19, please? Then he shall turn his face toward the, the, uh, toward the forth of his own land, but he shall stumble and fall and not be found. Anyway, so th this particular king... The reason I said this is because a lot of people think that this king is actually um, King Caesar Augustus, all right? Because he was the one that imposed tax 
on the people before the birth of Christ, which made Christ to be born in Bethlehem. All right, so it's, that's, that's what some scholars, some scholars think, okay? And some others think that that's not the case. This is Selechius III. Okay, I'm telling you history. Just follow me because I'm coming, I'm, I'm coming down to chapter 30, verse 32. All right, so enjoy. Enjoy the ride, okay? <laughs> so, <laughs> amen. If you want to sleep, just slap yourself a little bit and wake up. Eh? Hallelujah. It works. It works. Some, you know those days in class when there's either physics sometimes, you know, or one of those very boring, boring lectures. And the lecturer is just talking. The best way to stay asleep, uh, to stay awake, is keep slapping yourself. Amen. I don't know if you did it, but sometimes I did. <laughs> Amen. All right. I'm going to also skip a little bit verse 20, 20 and come down to verse 21 because this is where we are going to. Verse 21 through 35. So verse 21 introduces another king. And the Bible calls him the vile or flattery king. So let's go to verse 21. It says, and his estate shall stand up a vile person to whom they shall not give the honor of the kingdom, but he shall turn in peaceably and obtain the kingdom by flatteries. They will not give it to him. So that means he doesn't have inheritance. Like, it's not, it does, it's not, set to, it's not expected to inherit the kingdom, but he shall actually obtain it by flattery. Some people think that this is talking about Tiberius Caesar, all right, because he actually obtained it. It wasn't, it wasn't his rightful, he wasn't the rightful heir, all right? So some people think this is talking about Tiberius Caesar, but then others also think that it's not, it's not the case, okay? He's talking about, um, uh, what's his name now? I've forgotten. Anyway, if I remember, I will tell you, but it's not important to where I'm going to. Amen. Praise God. But yeah, so this, this is very key. Let's, let's go to verse 22. Follow me, please. And with the arms of a flood shall they be overflown from before him and shall be broken. Yea, also the prince of the covenant. Now, some people think that this prince of covenant is talking about Jesus, okay? Because Tiberius, is, it was in his, the time of Tiberius Caesar that... Um, Jesus was actually crucified. So they think that the prince of the covenant is actually talking about Christ. So he was instrumental, you know, to the, down, uh, to the crucifixion of Christ. All right. But um, like I said, this is not where I'm going to. I'm just giving you all the nuggets. So that by the time you leave this service, you will know that you know Daniel chapter 11. Okay. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> all right. So let's go down to verse 23. And after the league made with him, he shall walk deceitfully, for he shall come up and shall become strong with a small people. So he doesn't have a mighty army, but the Bible says he's strong. You know, if you, if you, if you want to know what it means to be vile and, you know, to, to, to take over position with flattery and with um, being corny, you know, look at the life of Esau and Jacob. All right. You know, um, Esau, Esau came back one day after he has day walk. He was very hungry. You know, and then he saw this very beautiful food that his brother was uh, eating. You know, he's like, ah, give me food to eat. And the brother is like, ah, okay. I wonder how Jacob came up with such imagination. Of all things in life to ask for, his birthright. I don't understand. <laughs> Amen. But anyway, he knew because anyone who is vile has an end game. Yeah. All right. So he knew what the end was. He knew what he was after. He was just waiting for the opportunity to seek for the better right. So, and Esau presented the opportunity to him on a platter. You know, because he was hungry. Amen. Don't blame yourself for so it's, uh, because, and for those of us who want to blame me, so yeah, that's what I wanted to say. Don't blame me, so because sometimes some of us have presented our best right to the devil on a platter. Sometimes, you know, you ask me how. <laughs> it says, Jesus says, "He said, I'll give you dominion to tread." Upon serpent 
and upon scorpions, and over every deadly thing, and nothing shall by any means harm you. And then it comes a day that there is no one naira in your bank account. And <laughs> one pound, okay. Well, I, I think the Spirit of God says we should use Naira because pound is too big. So, <laughs> so by, by the time you use uh, Naira, you know, how many pains would that one be? <laughs> Amen. Even, even in Nigeria, you can hardly see one Naira. In, you know, I don't think they do one Naira anymore. Even 100 Naira is becoming obsolete. Anyway, God help us. <laughs> let's 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 go back. But it it comes to this time that you don't have any any money in your bank account. Remember what happened to Jesus? He's just coming down from the mountain. He was hungry. You know, he has authority, right? He has authority to turn stone to bread. The devil doesn't need to tell him to do that. He has the authority to do it. If he wanted to do it in, out of his own volition, he would have been able to do it. But the devil came to him in tempting to say, turn the stone to bread. Jesus knew that he had authority over all the earth. He knew that he was, he is, not was, sorry, he is the king of all. The devil doesn't need to give him that authority. Jesus already has it. But that was the deception of the devil in his place of weakness. And that's what you need to start asking yourself. How many times have you sold your birthright in your place of weakness? Don't blame me, sir. Don't blame him. Oh, guy was hungry. He didn't know what to do. Uh -huh. Anyway, let's come back to our study. That was a little diversion, an interesting one indeed. Thank you, Jesus. Verse 24. <clears throat> Verse 24. Amen. Okay. Let me open my Bible. Oh, is it there? Okay. He shall enter peaceably even upon the fattest places of the province. And he shall do that which his fathers have not done, nor his father's father. He shall scatter among them the prey and spoil and riches and all that. So he's, he's just telling you about what this flattery king will do. So the flattery king, if you actually read it, he is actually trying at this, at this time, he is gaining dominion over the king of the north. All right, so he's kind of recognized. Even though there is a king of the north, the king of the north at this time was, was relegated to the background. So this king was gaining dominion over the king of the north. And that's what would lead me all the way down to verse 28 and 29. You can read the others, but let's go to 28 and 29. We're coming to verse 32, which is the anchor scripture for the year. It says, Then shall he return into his land, with great riches, and his heart shall be against the holy covenant. Now, this king, or this supposed king of the north, went into battle with the king of the south. The first time he lost. Verse 20, 26, 27, 28, I think, explains some of that. The first time he went into battle with the king of the north, with the king of the south, he lost. The second time he went into battle with the king of the south, now, this, this is now, um, we, we have left Persia now. This is the formation of the Roman Empire now. Sorry, I didn't, I didn't introduce that to you, but anyway. This, this is the formation of the Roman Empire. So the second time he went into the, into the king of the south, he lost. Why? Because Rome sent people from Cyprus, sent an army from Cyprus to the, to, to the south to help fight with the king of the south against this flattery king. And when he came back, he was upset. He was angry. And he took his anger against the people of God. And this is where we are going to. 
verse 32. Remember, he is a flattery king. A flattery king doesn't need to punish you to make you do his bidding. He doesn't need to, you know, to, to crucify you to make you do his bidding. You know, in the, in the Garden of Eden, the, the devil did not need to, to do anything to Eve. The devil didn't punish her. The devil didn't tell her that, you know, um, she was going to be killed. Neither did the devil do the same to Adam. All he did was tell them, do you know? And to be honest, he told them the reality of the situation. You know, he didn't, he didn't lie to them. He didn't lie. He said, if you eat of this, your eyes shall be open. When they ate, were their eyes not open? It was open. The devil didn't lie to them. So, sometimes, deceitfulness doesn't necessarily come in lies. Okay? So, you, you find this so interesting. You know, it is, it, it is very good because, you know what, the Bible interprets the Bible. I think pastor has said that before. The Bible interprets the Bible. Sometimes it's interpreted wrongly. I pray that the Lord will give you grace that in the weakest of times, the strength of the Lord will be multiplied in your life. In the name of Jesus. I don't know who that prayer was for, but it was for someone. Amen. Let's proceed. Verse 29. At the time appointed, he shall return and come toward the south. But it shall not be as the former or as the latter. Verse 30. Shittim, the Cyprus, shall come against him, therefore he shall be grieved and return and have indignation against the holy covenant. So shall he do. He shall even return and have intelligence with them that forsake the holy covenant. Let's, Bida, if you can put amplified, I want to read from verse 30 to verse 35 with the amplified version. Verse 30 to 35. If it's possible. If not, I can read it. Um. All right. It's up. Okay. Thank you. Uh, verse th uh, 30. Okay. It says, For ships of Cyprus, okay, I've already said that, in hands with, will come against him in Roman hands, okay? Oh, this is nice. This is why I also like Amplify, because it's interpreting some of the things that I said earlier. Okay, we come against him. Therefore, he will be discouraged and turn back to Israel. I'm talking about the people of the Holy Covenant now. And carry out his rage against the Holy Covenant. And take action. So he will return and show favoritism towards those Jews who abandon the Holy Covenant with God. He's going to return. And then it says he's going to show favoritism to the Jews that abandon the Holy Covenant. You know, when um, Dr. Victor was giving the announcement, you know, and uh, he made mention, he says, I believe you're already doing great exploits, you know. And I believe if I also say now, and all of you, you screamed amen, including me. Um, I believe if I also say now that you will do great exploits in the name of Jesus. Thank you. <laughs> you will say amen. It's good. You need to say amen. <laughs> but if you want to say amen, you need to understand what exploit is. So that by the time you are saying amen, you will know. 
That God is not telling you that you are going to have money in your pocket. That's not great exploit. God is not telling you that you are going to pass all your exams with A's. That's not great exploit. God is not telling you that you are going to, you are not, uh, you are going to be healed. Let me use it that way. I know you might not like this one. But God is not telling you you are, you are going to be healed. Or that you are going to heal the sick or raise the dead. That's not great exploit. Those are prerequisites. Those are, those are, are things that make you do great exploits. Those in itself or in themselves, they are not great exploits. Before I go down, let me, let me define exploit for you so that you will understand what I'm talking about. The definition of exploit is, you can Google it as well so you don't think I'm telling you what is not correct. In fact, there are, there's another definition of exploit that if you read it, you may not even want to say amen again. But <laughs> let, let, let us go with this one. All right. It says, the word exploit simply means to make full use of or derive benefit from. So that's what exploit is. Another definition of exploit is actually to take advantage. All right. So, but that's not the, the, the aspect we're going to. This is the one that, 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 that suits our theme for this year. It says, the word simply means to make full use or derive benefit from. So, it means that there must be something for you to make use of. And there must be something for you to de derive benefit from. So, exploit in itself is a completion of a journey. Alright? So, when the Bible talks about you having great exploit, exploit is responsibility that comes with the success preceding it. That's what the Bible is talking about. So, the, you raising the dead is fantastic, but that's not the exploit. That is an avenue for exploit. Do you get it now? You having all the money in your bank account is not great exploit. You can have all the money in your bank. Ananias and Sapphira, they were rich. They were rich. They had all the... They could have easily given what it is. They could have easily given it without, you know, without stress. But they died. They perished. Why? Because they didn't get to the exploit part of, the, of, of this particular scripture. Let's read Joshua chapter 1 before I come to verse 32 of, um, of Daniel 11. Let's read uh, Joshua chapter 1. This is actually down, down in my list, but I think the Spirit of God is asking us to go there. It says, this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night. That thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous. That's still not the end. And then thou shalt have good success. So it says, You will. Acquire the book of the law, which is simultaneous to what Daniel 11.32 is going to tell us shortly when we read it. It says, we'll acquire the book of the law. Keep it within you. Meditate on it day and night. Brood upon it. It says, then you will observe to do it. Don't read it and sit down. Amen. Are we still awake? Yes. If you're happy and you know, say amen. amen. If you're happy and you know, say amen. amen. Ah, what happened now? If you're happy and you know it, and you really want to show it, if you're happy and you know it, say amen. amen. Thank you. Clap for yourselves. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's interesting to study the Bible. Amen. Okay, let's come back home. 
Yes. So it says that you will brood upon it, you know, you will make it a personal lifestyle by living it out, by doing it. And then it says, you will make your way prosperous. I wrote something down. Let me, let me say it. Um, I think I wrote it in my jotting pad. Um, okay. Yeah, I said, a lot of the time, we make public declaration of our desire to follow Jesus. Within which we make conditions that within us we know will prevent us from making fruitful our promise when the time comes. And this is not the one I want to read. Um, I, I made a lot of jotting on this. I will not be able to go through all of them with you. Anyway, um, I will find it later. But what, what I'm trying to say there is... A lot of the time, we celebrate prosperity, and we fail to celebrate success. So the Bible says, you will make your way prosperous. A lot of us stop at prosperity, and we come to give testimony. But very few go beyond prosperity. The Bible says, with this prosperity, you will have good success. And what is the good success we're talking about? Let's now go to Daniel 11.32. I'm going to try to round up now. I think I have about 15 or so minutes left. Or oh, about, yeah, there about. I'll see. Verse 32. Amplified, please. Okay, don't worry. Wait, let, let's actually look at KJV so that we'll... It says, and such as do wickedly against the covenant shall be corrupt by flatteries. So, it says the people that do wickedly against the covenant. Now, remember, because this, this is what can confuse some people sometimes. You will think that he's talking about the Christians. You know, it's not. It's not it says those that do wickedly. So, these were already wicked in themselves. All right? It's the same thing as, as the, um, uh, I think it's Matthew 24. When the Bible talks about it, it says, and the love of many shall wax cold. All right, a lot of people, a lot of people think that this will be a lot of Christians backsliding. You know, that's that that's not what what, what it's talking about. Okay, it's, it's not talking about Christian backsliding. All right, so um, anyway, I don't I don't want to divert to that to that aspect. Let, let me stay on verse thirty two. Maybe if time comes, we can we we can go to that. Okay, verse thirty two. It says, "As and such as do wickedly against the covenant, shall he corrupt with flatteries." These are the people that we ourselves are expected to bring into the covenant. This is our responsibility. This is good success. This is service. God has given us a mandate when Christ was living. Go into the world and make disciples of all nations. That's the mandate. Doesn't matter if they do wickedly or not. Make them disciples. Bring them into the household of God. Minister to them with the resources I have endowed you with. Use what it is that you possess to depopulate the kingdom of the man that does flattery. That's what the Bible is saying. He is asking you, he's giving you a task. Now, when you read, a lot of us actually stop at verse, um, or actually focus on verse 32b. But verse 30, 32a is very significant to verse 32b. Uh, media, please, if we can take that in Amplified now, I think that would be nice. Oh, thank you. The Spirit of God is one. Amen. It says, with smooth words of flattery and praise, he will turn to godliness those who are willing to disregard the Mosaic Covenant. They are willing. It is already in, in them to disregard it. 
I want you to understand you have an assignment. When we are talking about great exploits and you say amen, you must realize that you are aligning yourself with the assignment of Christ. When pastor is telling you that you will have... See, see, don't, don't worry about success. And when I say success, I mean all the prerequisite to exploit. Don't worry about it. I know, I know. I, I, have had, I have so many testimonies to tell you that I know that as a Christian, regardless of what is happening around you, you can never fail. I know. You don't need to tell me two times. I know. I'm convinced of this very fact. Situations might not look like it, but I know, I know that God is always going to provide for me. So, let us not be too bothered because sometimes that is a lot of our prayer points. We pray too much about the things that we already possess. Too much. A lot of the time you are down on your knees begging God to give you what he has already given you. Meanwhile, there is an instruction that God has for you. Say, don't be bothered. Don't be bothered about passing your, your PhD. You will pass. Hey, if you say amen or not, you will still pass. <laughs> Unless you are not a Christian. If you are a Christian, you will pass. Unless maybe God actually wants you to fail it so that he can send you to one village to do evangelism. It, it can happen. I know you will not say amen to that one. Uh -huh. <laughs> but sometimes it can happen. Uh -huh. Because some of us can use strong hair to do PhD. And God will tell you, you know, you know that God actually told you not to do it. But you wanted to do it nonetheless. Anyway, let me not go there before I will lose you now. And you will not listen to me anymore. Amen. So, let's come back home now to the assignment that God has for us. Are you enjoying my teaching so far? Yeah. Eh? Okay. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Let's now go to verse... 32b. This is interesting. But the people who are spiritually mature and know their God will display strength. Now, note the first one in Joshua 1.8. It talks about the knowledge of God translating to prosperity, translating to success. Now here, it's talking about the knowledge of God and spiritual maturity. Translating to strength. Translating to action. And action is what is exploits. So do you want to do great exploits? Take action. <laughs> and that's why it is service for exploit. See, you can never you can never, in year 2022, it is a year of great exploit, certainly. But if you truly want to experience it, you should be ready to act upon the instructions of God. If you truly want to experience it, you should be ready to act upon the instructions of God. You know, Every one of us have our weaknesses, no doubt. This, this, this dropped in my heart while, while, while I was preparing it, so I think I should say it. We all have our weaknesses, no doubt. No doubt. And it is in the place of your weakness that the devil can tempt you. So please, keep watch. Keep watch. It says, they that do know they are God, they that are spiritually mature, so you have to devote yourself. If, if you want to talk about, in, in the Bible study, the past two weeks, we've looked into spiritual um, knowledge. And we also looked into increasing in spiritual knowledge. So if you, if you haven't followed, 
I, I, I won't spend time to, to dwell on knowledge. So if you, if you want to listen to it, go back and listen to our Bible study teachings. Amen. This is me advertising Bible study now. I'm the Bible study coordinator. Amen. So, <laughs> praise God. So, listen to it and, and improve yourself. Praise God. So, it's, it's talking about knowledge. Knowledge. When you, when you have knowledge, you draw strength from knowledge. But remember, knowledge can also be very destructive as well, if not understood properly. Knowledge can lead to fear. Remember the parable of the talent. When they give all the different people talent, and the one, is it the one with two talent? He said, he went to hid it, right? With one, okay, thank you. He, he, went, he went and he hid it. And then when the master came, he says, I know. I know. That you... <laughs> he said, I know. So, wait. <laughs> what you will ask yourself is this. If you know I am a hard man, why don't you do something positive with what I have given to you? Don't you think I can kill you if you don't do something positive with it? I don't, I, I, I don't know if you are with me on this one. You know, just, just imagine that you have a father who is very strict. And he told you to go to the market to sell um, pure water. Back in the day, some of you, you, might, you might not believe it. But back in the day, God has blessed me. I used to sell, um, you know, this ice cream that they tie. You know those, those ones that you would now be sucking from cellophane. Those of you that didn't grow up in Nigeria, you might not, you might not understand. <laughs> eh? Uh -huh. Those ones that they'll put color inside. Uh -huh. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Uh, you know, you will not tie it, and then you they'll put it in the freezer it will get frozen. And you no, know, because I'm the last born, they usually give it to me to go and sell. Amen. And you dare not come home without the money. You know, it's, you know. Anyway, God has blessed me. Amen. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> but my point to that is, if this man has knowledge of the master being a hard man, how will you then go and keep his money on the ground and wait for him to now come back. And you now go and uproot it with boldness. You, you now bring it. And give it back to him exactly the same way. In fact, the money would have, uh, would have accumulated debt. And you bring it to him that way. Ah. Oga oh, 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 really wanted to die. You know, <laughs> I, can't, I can't imagine. But anyway, this is knowledge not properly understood. And that can lead to destruction. All right, so another, another knowledge, I think, um, I, I had that one, yes. Another knowledge not properly understood is Adam and Eve. Right. You know, they, were, they, they, they ate of the fruit. They were naked. You know, they know, they know God, that God will clothe them. Right? They know that when God come to fellowship with them, you know, he comes in the middle of the night to fellowship with them, to have, you know, my wife used to say this word, kononia. You know, it's, it's a big, or there's no other that deal with Greek and Hebrew. You know, say kononia with them. You know, and, when, when they, and yet, they went to hide. And God was so kind. It's not that he was not seeing them. He was seeing them. God, there's nowhere you can hide. God was seeing them. You know, some of us that, are, that might have done one sin or the other, including myself, in the midst of that sin, you know that God is seeing you. You know. So sometimes we come out and we ask God for mercy. Father, thank you for being a merciful God. <laughs> God help us. You know, the reason why I'm saying this is for you to understand that there is a responsibility that God has placed upon your life as a Christian. The reason why you have all the things that you have is not for you to sit down and give testimony and go back home. What are you doing with your testimony? One interesting fact you should know is that the immigrant population in the United Kingdom is what is holding 
the Christendom in this nation. I learned that uh, the amount of cathedrals actually fell. Was it from 42,000 to about 39,200 roughly? About that. Within a space of 10 years. But now, the amount of Christian congregation, they didn't call it cathedral now because it includes Christian congregation has risen to about 50,000. So, it is, it is said that it is the immigrant population in the UK. So, the reason God brought you here is to populate his kingdom. And some of us are at home streaming life. No, it's, it's because the thing is that if you continue to stream life, churches will start to close. Because nobody will come in here. If you like, don't clap. I've said it. <laughs> it's the truth. It's the truth. You know, it's, live, live the live streaming for the unbelievers. God wants to use it to catch them. That's why, that's why that is happening. Leave it. Leave God. Because they will just turn on to Facebook and they will see something. And they'll be like, ah, I will come to this church. That God is using. Not for you who is now mature. The Bible says, let him that is spiritually mature. If you go down to 33, 35 and the rest, there is a responsibility that is placed upon the spiritually mature person. So not you who is now spiritually matured. You will now sit down at home and spread your leg. And then change, uh, change from YouTube to Facebook. And from Facebook to Instagram. You know, you are going from one, from one day, you will finish ROCCG, you will go to this, you will go to... It is good. It is good. But don't do it when it is time for service. Come to church. Amen. Now, this is one of the lie of the enemy. You know, that... Uh, that you know, um, the, the, the church is in my heart. I worship, I worship the Lord in my heart. It's a lie. It's a lie. <laughs> the Bible says, do not forsake the assemblies of the brethren. Eh? We, you know, in, I think it's in Luke 24, when Jesus gave them the promise, he said to them, he said that they should go to the city and wait until they receive power. But if you come to Acts chapter 2, right? Chapter 2 verse 1. It says, they were all together. Together. Eh? They could have been in different places in the city. Because the instruction was actually to go to the city and wait. So they could have been in different places in the city. But no, they said, I cannot forsake the assembly of the brethren. And it was in that oneness that the Spirit of God came down. The vile man is so deceitful, he can get you when you are on your own. He knows he can't get you when you form a cord. But he comes for you when you are alone. Be careful. Another very deceitful one that the devil is passing around now is the issue of tithes and offering. I won't go into it, but there are scriptures of no, no, no need as well. A lot of people say, you are, why are you enriching the pocket of the man of God by sowing seed? Is it your money? See, let me tell you, these people that are telling you these things as believers, they go to clubs and they spend thousands of pounds thousands of pounds and they don't complain in pubs some of them receive their salary if you think i'm lying the end of the month friday night go outside to the city center you will see pubs and club okay i have okay amen my time is up <laughs> but i i i am I, i'm here to teach and I'm, I'm believing God that God has dropped something in your heart. Don't allow the devil to rob you of the goodness of God for your life. See, as a Christian, 
you have a responsibility. When you are saying amen to great exploits, say it with action. Because exploit, like we see in the amplified version, is basically action. Go out. Minister the word of God. Don't be afraid to use your money to propagate the kingdom of God. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Pastor, pastor rarely talks about tight offerings, giving, and the rest. But I'm not pastor, so I can say it. Please, give to the work of God. Give. Let him buy private jets. He deserves it. Clap. <laughs> because you know what? The vile man is not going to be coming riding 2K2K. How many of you know 2K2K? Oh, you don't know? Oh, Pastor, don't know 2K2K? Oh, it is where? <laughs> okay. Maybe that one is the local worry, worry slang. <laughs> Sorry. I grew up in worry, so uh, that's why. <laughs> Amen. But to be honest with you, the vile man is not going to be coming riding bike, Okada. Eh? He's not going to be coming riding that. Because the Bible says that he, those who turned away from the covenant, he granted them prosperity and then he blessed them with flatteries. It's not words of mouth. There is actually substance. So use your resources wisely. Don't allow the devil to deceive you. I'm going to stop and I'm going to ask you to pray for yourself. It's a year of great exploit before the man of God comes and takes over. It's a year of great exploit. But I want you, I want you to pray for yourself. That I am ready to take action. To propagate the work of Christ in year 2022. I am ready to be of benefit to the kingdom of God. I'm not going to sit idle. I'm not going to sit down and be looking. Let this be your declaration. If you are thinking about how you are going to do it, don't bother about that. The Lord God Almighty is able to provide exceedingly and abundantly. I just want you to make that decision, a conscious decision to say, God, I decide today that I will use everything that pertains to me to propagate your kingdom here on earth. This is my decision. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Obviously, uh, Dr. Victor is more courageous than me. Yeah, he, he, he said a lot of things that would summon so much courage to say. God bless you, sir. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Um, while I was seated there, God just dropped a song in my heart for us to sing. As I got here, this man started playing it. Can we just rise? Project it pays to serve Jesus. We're going to sing it together from the beginning to the end. Sing it with a heart. You are making a commitment to God. You are making a fresh commitment to Him. More like you are rededicating yourself to Him and you are telling Him, Lord, I will go all the way with you. Oh 
seven more truly than ever. Shall they break up? 